we have a lot of stuff going on in the world of CircuitPython and Python on hardware. And what we like to call it is code, code plus, plus community. community. And I think when you do a good enough job with open source and you have enough people working together, eventually great things come out. And some of it is like things like assistive technology that's very here, helping fellow humans. And then there's things like space exploration. So I like to say that Circuit Python is good on the street, good on the stratosphere. And it's not just words now. Um, this is probably one of the neatest projects. Um, these are 50 microsatellites, and they're loaded with Circuit Python. And this is an animation, of course, we don't have the video from space. And um, Max sent this in. This is from the Kicksat Sprite 2019. And there is an upcoming small sat conference, and uh, Professor Zach Manchester um, will be talking about this, and also Max. And the software side of things is, is what Max was working on. And Max got his start in Discord and showing and sharing. These are the Lab 64 at Sanford um, Snowflakes mm -hmm. that the students came up with, and then they manufactured them. And these were running CircuitPython. And then Max made this, which kind of looks familiar. It is a um, similar design to what we do. It's a um, ESP32 plus the SAMD. 51, and 51. then also like the micro SD card in the bottom. This yeah. is just like jam packed. And um, Max has been showing and sharing stuff in Discord, and then sent these photos in. He's like, hey, these are all the satellites running CircuitPython that are about to go to space. So cool. And uh, we link to the GitHub repo. You can see the visualizer um, for the actual PCBs. This is all open source, and this is one of the, the first examples of uh, Python and hardware in space, CircuitPython in space. And one of the cool things that Max said, um, you know, sometimes someone says it better than you can, um, and Max did. This is why Max and the teams he works with chose CircuitPython. CircuitPython provides an approachable and logical means of conducting science with hardware. Paired with low-cost hardware shown to work in space, we can enable a new generation to question and explore the unknown with the necessary, quote, satellite stuff already baked in. Students can spend their time trying something new rather than reinventing the wheel, a similar philosophy to early Arduino efforts and the microcontroller movement in general. So um, I think also, like, Python, to be fair, like, I know people are like, oh, I can't believe you're running interpreted language in space, but actually, having worked with Arduino for over a decade, you know, in C, C++, in Python. There's a lot of things that the Python one, of course, you know, your Python one time has to be good and solid, but if the Python one time is solid and you have students writing code for it, they don't have to worry about like memory overwrite errors or like misallocations. And if you do run out of memory, like you don't hard fault, it just restarts the, you know, it's like, oh, you have a memory exception, I'll just restart it. So having exception handling and all your memory stuff taken care of for you will, av I think, will minimize the risk of somebody like building a project, putting it in space, and then, you know, it happens that you know eventually it runs into um, some bug that they coded in and off by one, and they're 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 writing the wrong values, the wrong array, and they just n then hit it on Earth, but then in space, you know, just because of timing or temperature or whatever, eventually it hits that um, yeah. chunk of code. If that does happen, you know, at least you don't hard fault, you'll just restart. So I think it could, I think in my opinion, especially for like anything that you actually want, retries and reliability, having an exception loop rather than um, CC++ where you have to have a watchdog timer take care of that for you, I think is a better solution. Yeah, and you know, repelling to satellite from the ground is cool. Also MQTT was designed for satellites and we've been doing a lot of stuff with that with Adafruit, IO and CircuitPython. So anyways, um, this is really neat and we'll be more about this soon. Um, on Friday, we had the release of CircuitPython 4 Beta 4, and then over the weekend, Monday, CircuitPython 5. So we're nearing the end of the betas for 4.0. We'll have a release candidate pretty soon. We're still going to do some um, fix to some issues, so please try it out and see what you think. On Friday, when Scott was releasing CircuitPython 4 Beta, um, he did a live stream for like three hours, and uh, I sped it up to like a minute. And it just has all the things that go into a release, fixing issues, um, lots of markdown. And this is kind of the making of an operating system. So you can see all the pieces that go into it. And then later on in the show, Scott showed some uh, Game Boy hacking. And I have a little video from that, um, specifically the part where the Adafruit logo comes down and you're able to uh, you know, move it around. And Scott also showed circuitpython.org. That's our new site, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So here's the, the Game Boy one.
So that's Circuit Python running on a cartridge. Maybe there's a little Adafruit logo around. Beep beep. Handy. And uh, speaking of Scott, congratulations! IEEE Spectrum Magazine featured Scott in their latest issue. Um, this is on stands shortly, or if you're a subscriber, I think you even get it now. And uh, the title of the article is Scott Shawcroft is squeezing Python into microcontrollers. Adafruit is betting the language will make sense for makers. And uh, the other thing that was cool is there was a uh, profile view a long time ago, so the algorithm or the manual things that an editor did put it there too. So that was neat to see all these things in one place. And it tells a story about CircuitPython, MicroPython, Python on hardware, why we're doing it. And uh, Scott has some great quotes and more, so check it out. And uh, you could read the article, it's on our site. And also, uh, well, we link to it, and it's also on IEEE Spectrum. We have circuitpython.org. Go oh, there. This is so good. Yeah, this is a good site. And the best part about it is when you go to circuitpython.org, click downloads. Ooh. You know how you always have a development board and you're like, what's the latest How do I build? just get, I just want the latest. I want the latest the build, software. or maybe I want the beta, or maybe I speak a I different just, language. I just, can you make it easy for me to just find That's the right. latest? So We did. So check that out. Um, I'm cranking through some of the text ed edits and some of the photos, but it doesn't matter. It's just a great way to it's visualize all, all the things that are on GitHub in an easy to use place. So go there now, and maybe some folks can post a link in the chat and just check out circuitpython.org slash downloads. And if you've ever done anything with microcontrollers, just click the first one, click Circuit Playground, and you'll see how easy it is to get the latest firmware. If you speak a different language, the latest one's there, and then the latest beta. This makes things super easy. We're probably gonna do Circuit Python Day. So right now it's tentatively 8-8, because I have these graphics. And it's like the sneakiest days. <laughs> yeah, it's the sneakiest days. August day. 8th. Yeah. It's kind of in the summer. People are usually not, you know, they're not at school, so they, could, they can do yep. stuff. And uh, other community news. If you are speaking at an event, this is Ian. This was at the... Um, the FOSS Asia. The FOSS Asia uh, in Singapore. And a lot of people are going to conferences and speaking about Python on hardware now and CircuitPython and MicroPython. Let us know. The organizers like it because we get the word out. The speakers like it because more people attend their... Um, sessions and we like it because it's like wow this is really cool we, we can hear about um, a lot of times we hear about it after so if you're going to speak at an event about Python on hardware anyway let us know um, this one uh, I really like this mostly because I came up with the headline circuit Python is a site for Thor eyes and this was a uh, circuit Python powered helmet that lights up UV um, contacts with um, you know, Gemma and CircuitPython. And I have a little video from the person's Instagram so you can see this even better. So we're trying stuff out today. We have a con on Friday and Saturday. And this is what we got going on for this week. I'm like pretty excited. Um, not too shabby. Definitely works good inside of the shield. <sighs> I'm like really sweaty though. It's like a problem. It's pretty cool. And then this time around, hold on. Looks spooky and great. And special thanks to Sophie for, uh, that's Sophie over there on um, probably the, the left on your screen. Um, I think that's Cheyenne, that's her, her friend or she, someone she knows and she tweeted this. And uh, thanks for bringing this to our attention. This is cool, this is two costuming projects that use CircuitPython. So that was Yay. one of our goals and it's happening. Um, another thing, this is Alex Danis, PhD. Made a thing, this is an LED helix using CircuitPython. And you can see the handiwork here. So Ooh, this is nice showing DNA with a, um, Gemma and CircuitPython. So if you want to learn about DNA, this is what this person usually does and talks about on YouTube. Um, but then you can see it. And with, she's celebrating it. Yeah. Next up, um, if you were interested in what's coming up soon with um, maybe online learning, well, there was a Codecademy team AMA, ask me anything, and they let everyone know there might be something with Adafruit soon in hardware. So that's all I can say. Check out the AMA. Yeah. People are getting their Pi Ask portals. Them anything. And they're making lots of cool This is an update displays. to our, we have the, the weather uh, display and it's now updated and has even more. I, I kind of kept it simple with just like, you know, the location, the time and, and the temperature. Yeah. Um, but this is an updated version with like the pressure and the humidity and like the sunrise and sunset time. So kind of yeah. everything. 
Blitz City is a Twin Peaks fan, and so when you put your hand over the Pi Portal, it changes photos for people who are Twin Peaks fans. You know what this is all about. Melissa Maker is making a very cool calculator for Pi Portal. Now Pedro released their uh, Viewmaster 3D printed Pi Portal, so you can do IoT Viewmaster projects. Deshipu has a new mailing list and a bunch of information available. This is cool because you can see a CircuitPython game platform and look at what's being worked on real time. So we link to that in the newsletter and more. And then this, this is this robot hat. Um, this is RC control with CircuitPython. I'm going to play just like a couple seconds of this because they, they really rock out on this video and I don't know if it's um, going to be YouTube um, audio issues. But um, this is an upcoming product and it's a um, Seesaw and CircuitPython based accessory for Raspberry Pi. So here's, here's a couple snippets of it. This is Adafruit Circuit Playground Express running the Beta 2, and this is a program reading MIDI over USB generating a variety of waveforms. So let's listen nice to this. Nice waveforms. Beep. And this was a really long broadcast that has a ton of information. This is using Circuit Playground, MakeCode, Circuit Python, and more. And this is the other Lone Star on Twitch. We link to this. Um, if you want to get an idea of all the things you can do with Circuit Playground, this is the show for you. Then, this is a HomeKit compatible laser trip wire. This is uh, someone tweeted this over at us. This was from uh, Len. If you have a particle board, you can run Circuit Python on it. We link to a video of the creator of MicroPython. Damien was showing off the new PyBoard D. Check it out. Um, also talks about some of the things that MicroPython's doing in space. All Python wants to go to space. Space. Yeah. And then uh, this is the new Cyberbot. This is programmable with the Micro MicroPython, MicroPython and mm -hmm. Moo. And this is from Parallax, one of the uh, one of our favorite uh, robotics companies. And they've been doing these robots for a very long time. Yep. These are classic. And what's funny is they've moved from you know, Pick Basic, which was the first, you know, Parallax Pick, Pick Basic. Um, and then they made an Arduino version, and now they're making, uh, and they made a, uh, par a propeller version, now they're making yeah. a microbit version. So you can basically build the same projects that have been well used and known for a very long time, but um, each time a little bit differently with different languages. This is a Tiny Pico. It's a small, fully featured ESP32 develop uh, development board designed to give you access and the power of ESP. 32's dual core, 240 megahertz, and internet connectivity. It's a package smaller than your thumb. It's on crowd supply, and there's a video we link to that. It's uh, part of the March 19th Linktastic MicroPython links and more. This is a project we're working on soon. This is a Python scale, um, and we'll probably get it working with I.O. We're going to um, look at some of the guides out there and some of the how-tos. We're also going to do one, so it uh, does lots of other stuff. So things from WebUSB to working with Adafruit I.O. and more. Posted the gallery from Sar, who does bolt port. Look at these beautiful PCBs. Oh, that's nice. Updated some more stuff. We now have um, specific. Uh, when you use the Adafruit jobs board, if you have CircuitPython skills post set up there, people are looking for those. And if you're someone who's looking for a job uh, to hire someone for, post that you're looking for CircuitPython. KiCad, that is a new event coming up. It is April 26th, 27th in Chicago. KiCon 2019, and Ki uh, KiCad just came out with a new version. A little bit of a reminder, PyCon will be coming up May 1st to May 9th. DigiKey and Adafruit have teamed up, and we're giving away a Circuit Playground Express to every single attendee. That's every single person. Think of all the cool stuff you're going to be able to build. That's right. The team will be there doing workshops and more. Some of the folks that you may recognize from Discord will be there. Katni did a um, really cool time lapse of soldering stuff for PyCon. I'm going to play a little bit of it now, and at the end of the show, 
I'm going to play the whole thing. So okay. that's, what, that's what we're going to do. So check out what Katni was able to not only solder, but capture it and then speed it up. Go, go, go. chilling conclusion yeah what happens <laughs> what happened next um awesome dash circuit python on github um it's github.com slash adafruit slash awesome, awesome dash, dash circuit python yeah. you can just google for it. it has all of this and more and we also have it in case you missed it with links and this is cool, this is cool feeds. Blinka. yeah i try to put different blinka art um, turns out we've had a few thousand years of making snake art, so it's pretty easy. No, to we them. love snakes yeah. and hate them, but yeah. we love them. Yeah. And that is Python on Hardware. Yay, another week. <laughs>